I'm Travis Wayne Goodsell. I had done an initial video, then when I put up the stuff about Nelson, coronavirus fast, I then realized as I was uploading that video that I should redo it. I wanted to get to bed. And uh, then I realized that having redone it with a new title, I should put in the scriptures <laughs> along with it. And so uh, I'm going to go to bed after this is saved and upload this in the morning for you. Unless I'm forced to stay up late like that one other night the other week. We'll see. So, uh, this version has the added scriptures. As a physician and surgeon, I have great admiration for medical professionals, scientists, and all who are working around the clock to curb the spread of COVID-19. I am also a man of faith, and I know that during these challenging times, we can be strengthened and lifted as we call upon God and His Son, Jesus Christ, the Master Healer, I invite you to join with me in a worldwide fast, for all whose health permits, to pray for relief from the physical, emotional, and economic effects of this global pandemic. For the first time, we have an idea now of how much the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints Big Investment Fund performed over the course of a year. That fund is called Ensign Peak Advisors, and Fox 13 News investigative reporter Nate Carlisle found the public document showing how many billions of dollars it gained in 2020. Over the last year, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints has been more forthcoming about how it's investing tithing money. This latest filing with the Securities and Exchange Commission shows that despite the economic downturn of the pandemic, the church's big investment fund made money. This filing with the SEC shows the holdings of Ensign Peak Advisors at the end of 2020. When added all up, it shows the fund gained more than $6 billion in one of the most difficult financial years in American history, finishing 2020 with $44 billion. Ensign Peak Advisors is thought to be the largest of the church's investment funds, which in 2019 was said to be worth about $100 billion. A church spokesman declined comment Friday. This is how the church's presiding bishop explained the investments in a church-produced video made in 2019. It's about building a reserve of the church, and ultimately, all of those funds will be used for church purposes. So uh, this is about preparing for the future. As for how Ensign Peak made money despite the pandemic, the filings show it received a boost from tech stocks. Its investments in Amazon made the fund about $650 million in 2020 without any significant change in the number of shares. Tesla offered a five for one stock split last year and that made money for Ensign Peak. What had been about $1 million in Tesla shares jumped to a value of about $330 million. Ensign Peak divested from some oil companies during the pandemic. In one example, the fund sold 15% of its shares in Chevron. On the whole, Ensign Peak invested in about 200 more companies in 2020, even as the total number of shares declined. While Ensign Peak's value increased 16% last year, the Dow Jones Industrial Average gained only 7%. This latest filing with the Securities and Exchange Commission is just a brushstroke of how the church invests its money. It doesn't cover, for example, real estate holdings across the United States. As followers of Jesus Christ, living in a day when the COVID-19 pandemic has put the whole world in commotion, let us not 
just talk of Christ or preach of Christ or employ a symbol representing Christ. Let us put our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ into action. As you know, members of the church observe the law of the fast one day each month. The Savior himself declared that certain things go not out but by prayer and fasting. Now as president of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints and an apostle of Jesus Christ, I know that God has all power, all wisdom, all understanding. He comprehendeth all things, and He is a merciful being, even unto salvation, to those who will repent and believe on His name. So during times of deep distress, as when illness reaches pandemic proportions, the most natural thing for us to do is to call upon our Heavenly Father and His Son, the Master here, to show forth their marvelous power to bless the people of the earth. In my video message, I invited all to join in fasting on Sunday, March 29th, 2020. Many of you may have seen the video and joined in the fast. Some may have not. Now we still need help from heaven. So tonight, my dear brothers and sisters, in the spirit of the sons of Mosiah who gave themselves to much fasting and prayer, and as part of our April 2020 General Conference, I am calling for another worldwide fast. For all whose health may permit, let us fast, pray, and unite our faith once again. Let us prayerfully plead for relief from this global pandemic. I invite all, including those not of our faith, to fast and pray on Good Friday, April 10th, that the present pandemic may be controlled, caregivers protected, the economy strengthened, and life normalized. For the first time, we have an idea now of how much the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints Big Investment Fund performed over the course of a year. That fund is called Ensign Peak Advisors, and Fox 13 News investigative reporter Nate Carlisle found the public document showing how many billions of dollars it gained in 2020. Over the last year, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints has been more forthcoming about how it's investing tithing money. This latest filing with the Securities and Exchange Commission shows that despite the economic downturn of the pandemic, the church's big investment fund made money. This filing with the SEC shows the holdings of Ensign Peak Advisors at the end of 2020. When added all up, it shows the fund gained more than $6 billion in one of the most difficult financial years in American history, finishing 2020 with $44 billion. Ensign Peak Advisors is thought to be the largest of the church's investment funds, which in 2019 was said to be worth about $100 billion. A church spokesman declined comment Friday. This is how the church's presiding bishop explained the investments in a church-produced video made in 2019. It's about building a reserve of the church, and ultimately, all of those funds will be used for church purposes. So, uh, this is about preparing for the future. As for how Ensign Peak made money despite the pandemic, the filings show it received a boost from tech stocks. Its investments in Amazon made the fund about $650 million in 2020 without any significant change in the number of shares. Tesla offered a five for one stock split last year and that made money for Ensign Peak. What had been about $1 million in Tesla shares jumped to a value of about $330 million. Ensign Peak divested from some oil companies during the pandemic. In one example, the fund sold 15% of its shares in Chevron. On the whole, Ensign Peak invested in about 200 more companies in 2020, even as the total number of shares declined. While Ensign Peak's value increased 16% last year, the Dow Jones Industrial Average gained only 7%. This latest filing with the Securities and Exchange Commission is just a brush stroke of how the church invests its money. It doesn't cover, for example, real estate holdings across the United States. As a doctor, I know the value of good therapy. So, dear friends, may I prescribe two activities to help us experience the healing power of gratitude.
From wildfire warnings to watering restrictions, we've heard a lot of warnings about the exceptional and extreme drought in Utah. And every few minutes, dozens of monitoring stations measure streams and rivers to tell us what conditions are right now. Fox 13's Max Roth shows us. Utah's waterways are drier than they've been in the last two decades for this time of year, in which they should be flowing at their peak. That's what I realized looking at the data the U.S. Geological Survey puts out all day every day. The red dots on this map of Utah show water is low. We'll zoom in on three significant places, starting with the Green River at the town of Green River. Travis Wayne Goodsell, after doing this video, I then started setting it up uh, with uh, what you will see at the beginning, which uh, goes for nine minutes. I realized that uh, I want to get to bed, <laughs> and so I'm going to redo it and just make it a, a quick and simple thing. Uh, Utah governor, as reported by The Hill, that's the thumbnail in the paper that you see on the screen that I'm looking at, uh, Utah Governor Cox has asked us, Utahns, to join him in a weekend of prayer for rain. This weekend is Fast Sunday for Mormons, and thus the previous videos. Nelson has failed to stop the signs of the latter days. Coronavirus is a sign of the latter days. It's in Moses's Exodus as well as Joseph Smith. You know, we're looking for our Christ who is a man like Moses. The learning of the Jews believes Moses is Christ and there will be a man like Moses for their latter days. Thus, Mormons are like unto Jews, not Christians. <clears throat> so section 103, verse 16, tells all about them. But section 45, verse 31, talks about the coronavirus coming. Nelson held two coronavirus fasts and then said the healing power of gratitude will cure coronavirus all of which failed. Do you understand that? The president of the church denies the signs of the latter days. I've gone over how he denies the Christ because he says it's the Roman period Gospels Jesus who failed to save the Jews and will fail to save the Jews this second time around because it's not the Roman period Jesus that's not even who they're looking for he doesn't exist he was created by Constantine Nicene Council Hamusius which is Trinity in our current understanding And so now that we have a severe drought, again, prophesied sign for the latter days, for the exodus, dividing the waters, pass through on dry land. Drought. And I've gone over with you, it has been done. I put in the Fox 13 News clip that showed that I was right. I had warned you about it. I even told you we are going to pass through at Green River. I'm right. Nelson's wrong. Nelson has now gone silent for the drought. He's not calling for a fast. Governor Cox is. 
as a regular Mormon, believing the church is true, believing the prophets are led by Jesus of the Roman period Gospels. So, who's going to be successful? The one who sticks to the scriptures about the prophecies of a exodus in the latter days or Governor Cox who has no authority from God is just a religious person because Nelson refuses to exercise his role as the president of the church to overturn the prophecies in a failed attempt again That's what all Mormons need to be realizing right now. Is this weekend of prayer? It will fail too. We have a forecast for continued heat. We're entering into summer. You know, we didn't have the snowpack. Why should we expect rain? There are consequences to heating up the earth all the combustion engines so remember that especially when I'm expecting next week we'll see all signs in the heavens and all other supporting seems to indicate next week because we're supposed to have a tornado that goes in front of our caravan. It's a good thing we don't have Trump in presidency, huh? <laughs> He'd be the pharaoh trying to murder our little band, our l merry band of few. Was that how it was in was Shakespeare? It was Hamlet, I believe it was, wasn't it? I have to go watch The Postman again. But who are you guys following? I mean, you guys are listening to my video, so obviously you're listening to me, but Mormons aren't listening to me. They will reap the consequences of failing to follow my inspiration. I've learned to follow my inspiration. I did the video today of how I'm always right when I follow my inspiration, because I produce the results to know that I was good and correct. That's how it is. Alright, that's a little better. <laughs>